What is AI and what can AI do for finance? How they should use generative AI, how they can use together ChatGPT and Python. Hi, Alex, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Vils, thanks so much for joining us. And to kick things off, please tell us what are we talking about when we use the term AI in finance? I'm specialized in finance, but not the financial markets or personal finance, really corporate finance. So if you think about the CFO, all of their team below them, so accounting, controllers, FP&A, treasury, tax, and also people acting for other companies uh, like auditors, like accounting services, that's uh, the scope that I am looking after. And because I am a finance guy first, and with a lot of appetite uh, to implement AI for a lot of companies and to also democratize and socialize what is AI and what can AI do for finance. That's why I'm looking at that. Cool. So let's just suppose we are drawing a map of a financial landscape. So which areas or sectors that are most actively leveraging AI at this moment? Before ChatGPT arrived and democratized the access of AI to all individuals, you had already big companies uh, like banking, insurances, also company in the financial services that were investing. They were looking at high volume transactions and see how they could use AI and machine, so machine learning and data science to get insights from the data or to forecast or to uh, identify fraud. And this was done like big data at high level. And that's where AI was used to recognize patterns and used to process data that humans cannot uh, do. Now that we have what we call the NLP, so natural language uh, processing, which is basically us talking to the machine and the machine understanding our words, then doing some robotic works that we don't see and then giving us back a response with our words, so the human words. So that's the NLP. And now that we have that, actually the accessibility is for all of the teams. And even like if you are watching today and you are not in finance, like since we have all of the open source LLMs, so ChatGPT, Gemini, Copilot, that are giving us the access of the power of AI, but to answer us questions with words, that's now like accessible to a lot of companies. And maybe one thing that also, if we forget about financial services and all of the big data, one thing we have been using AI since a long time in finance is P2P process, so pay to pro uh, procure to pay. Meaning you purchase something, then you pay it. So finance is really involved inside this, so paying invoices. And you can imagine that companies can get 100,000 of um, invoices. And before, it was a lot of people just entering, uh, so looking at uh, an invoice like this, and then uh, looking how they could enter that in the system manually. And that's since, uh, I think, five to 10 years, we use AI to recognize the invoice and what is on it, and then map it with the accounting system to book the invoice on the system. And the last, I would say the last months, we replace the human that were doing the matching. So recognizing what was on the invoice and explaining to the computer where to book that. Now there is with NLP, um, I would say like a matching based on the highest probability of where it should go. Because AI can also recognize that if it's invoice number, it should go to the field invoice number. Cool, cool. Thanks, Nicolas. I guess now we call it traditional AI, although I don't think it's that old yet. So it's actually machine learning models that have been used for a while in the field already, as you mentioned. And now we have this uh, new generative AI. Well, I know generative AI sounds very exciting, but finance relies heavily on trust and accuracy. So how can we bridge the gap between the potential of the new type, like the generative AI, large, large language models, NLP, as you mentioned, and the need for absolute reliability? It's a good question because that's where I would say finance people see the limits on uh, using generative AI. Because it's really good to write text, really good to research, um, really good, I will say, um, 
to to solve problems as well to help you like uh, kind of an assistant who is your project manager to solve a problem but when it comes to financial analysis because of the nature of generative ai which is there to guess what is the most probable answer it doesn't work if we want to sum up figures if you want to calculate kpis it's too risky to let that to a probabilistic uh, model you need something acting like a spreadsheet and because of this actually the trick and that's what we teach also in our course is to use generative ai to code python code which can then calculate uh, and do financial analysis or change Excel files or create visualizations. So let's imagine that you have uh, a big Excel file with a lot of departments with all of their expenses. If you have to do the analysis alone, it will be really, really heavy. And you can actually use generative AI to give you the methodology, explain you what is the best way to do this analysis and then after to help you code that in Python, or first I will say you can ask what is the best Excel me uh, methods, what is the best uh, graphics, and it will give you exactly the formulas. So like this, you can apply it in your own file. And uh, secondly, if you want to scale and automate, you can ask uh, to give you the Python code. And for all of the finance people listening today, two news. <laughs> First uh, bad news, Python is now going to be a tool you will need to use. But the good news, you will not have to learn how to program it because uh, ChatGPT can do it for you. And once you take out the barrier of programming, actually everybody can use it. I, I am the first example. I never learned programming for Python and I am using it every week. Oh my God, that's amazing. So what do you see in the relationship between the coding and let's say the generative AI tools? Because now it's like people have like the two different opinions on it. One is like with the current generative AI tools or let's say in the future, they're going to get better and better. Coding maybe is not needed to learn for everyone anymore. And another opinion is at least at this moment, they are still like a very necessary for the turn like the data science or machine learning task. What's mm -hmm. your opinion on this? For me, I, when I explain also that finance people need to start with Python and the barrier is really low, it's not hard. We in finance, actually, we have been coders all of our life. When you uh, write a formula in Excel, it's code. If you put a condition saying, if the cell is above 100, uh, then say that is right. If it's below 100, then say that it's wrong. That's uh, a formula that's code. And when you look at Python code, when you look at SQL, it's really, really similar. And once you have like understood, okay, I know the principle of coding, which is just uh, common sense and um, mathematics once you have this your brain and you have experience this it doesn't matter actually which code you do and that's where like you don't need to learn all of the codes you just need to learn the basics and how it works and you need to use then a generative ai to help you code for you what is more important is to get uh, a knowledge of what the code can do for you yeah. and once you learn all of the possibilities then you can ask more questions because there are a lot of things you don't know and there's a lot of things you don't know that you don't know so um, for example a lot of people don't know that Python can can combine files like uh, the VBA code of an Excel file can do. An example that helped me, I had uh, two months ago to process 80 files for my accounting and uh, the accountant that I'm paying, uh, so it's an external provider, $100 per hour, told me, okay, it will take me one week because I have to go manually and then change all of the Excel files and then upload them in, in the accounting uh, system. And I was telling him like, wait a minute, <laughs> let me think about it. I, I might find a way. And then I just worked with ChatGPT and Python next to each other. I first asked, okay, give me the code to combine the 80 files in one file. That took me 30 seconds and worked like at the first started work because it's really basic code. Then I thought, okay, now I need on this uh, file, I had some some logics on okay using some account code account numbers some client numbers some logics on if it's positive or negative like uh, say if it's debit credit and i ran like a discussion in chat gpt and again after 15 minutes i had the perfect code with some iteration that was changing the file in one second then i send the file to my accountant and i ask him to to try if it works 
And then on the phone, he told me, yeah, let me try. He uploads and then reply, okay, everything green. And we just saved one week of his work. And I, like, you can uh, imagine like 40 hours times 100. That was a good one hour invested. Oh my God. Love the story. Love the story. And that is the true proof of the how to leverage in your daily works. That's really good. All right, Nicolas. So now we need some advice from you. So let's say for decision makers who are looking for implement generative AI. So what key considerations that should be in their strategy? You will create value once you use generative AI combined with your own data. So you need to look at, okay, what are your strategic data that you have? Because that's going to be the war uh, for data. Um, I think first, before that, first, you need to educate people that they know how to prompt all of the open LLMs tool. What are the possibilities? What are the risks and limitations? And that can go really fast. I did last week a training uh, for KPMG and really like we started where 80% were really unsure how they should use generative AI for their work. And after the first hour, everybody was writing on a, on a post-it all of the use cases they could do once they have seen the, the right methods and the possibilities. And we finished at the end of the three hours with a real concrete use cases. So I will start with this by educating people. And once you have done this, then you need to look at okay, which data you have. How can you um, have your own environment where people are not also... Uh, stress about confidentiality of data because you can use the uh, open LLMs at 99% without giving any confidential data and use a lot and get a lot of value. But you will still have a lot of companies that are concerned about it and don't want to let their employees like take some risks. So I, I see a lot of companies, I have some clients that already implemented uh, their own LLM and it's just like open AI LLM, but with, they sign a contract so that it's their in own environment. And then the third step is how can you build a lot of small uh, use cases first, like creating a chatbot, which can answer all of the common questions that employee have. If you are in HR, there is like the onboarding process, there is trainings, there is holidays, there is a sickness, there is change of departments, bonus, all of this, if you are pregnant, if you move a house, like there is a lot of policies, you can just give some documents to your LLM and you combine it with OpenAI and it will understand the questions and then will pick when needed the right answer from the documents and answer as a chatbot to all of the employees. And you can do that in finance as well because in finance, we have a lot of policies like expenses policies, investments policies, et cetera, et cetera. You can create this. So that, those are some use cases. And once you have done this, then you can start also using, I will say, AI like to process documents, uh, to like all of the invoices, all of the, the receipts. Uh, there are some really modules that are easy to use in Azure. Uh, called um, in cognitive services, there is form like uh, form recognizer, which is easy to use. And then I will say ultimately is how can you query your data and from your data create insights? And that's a bit more complex. I talked with somebody yesterday or that has kind of good process of validating that the query of the users are actually always come back with the same answer. And they use a combination of SQL and NLP to, uh, to do that. Those are a bit more complex projects, but which deliver a lot of value if instead of making a lot of people busy when you have one question, the typical CFO wants to know where we are on some products, why are we losing money? And then you have like a team of finance people working five days to, to make a lot of uh, graphs and, and stats. And if he could just query a chatbot and get his answer in uh, two seconds, we will save a lot of time. Thanks, Nicholas. I really love, like, you explained to us with a lot of, like, the great examples. It's really help, very helpful. And I think we still have a bit of time. So do you mind to share with us what are the current projects that you are working on? The most uh, yeah, exciting sure. one. <laughs> so my goal is really, I feel there is a lot of value in AI for finance. And like I explained before, first, you need to educate people to understand how to use generative AI. So I have a video course on this, which is just GPT for finance. Everybody can access it and uh, get it on, it's on demand. Then once you have done this, we have a course, which is live. 
And we have one in March actually, and we do that every two months where we show people, you know, the story I explained you with Python, we show people and we teach them how they can use together ChatGPT and Python for financial analysis, visualizations, automation. And once I will say you are, you have done this, then the last step is we do, uh, so we have the AI finance club where if you are a CFO, if you are a fractional CFO, or um, I have some people working in big companies in finance, finance transformation, you want to know what is happening in AI, what, how to use AI in your financial uh, processes but you don't have time to uh, to learn about it. You don't have time to research. And we do all of the work and we give every week exclusive content for this. And so that's the AI Finance Club. And for, also for companies, if they want to train people, if they want to build an AI roadmap on their finance or even non-finance, uh, I also help companies uh, on this. Cool. Thank you so much, Nicolas. And thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure talking to you and I learned a lot from our conversation. Thank you, Alex, and coaching like this because I think we have a common goal of making uh, AI accessible for everybody and to also make it practical for businesses. So uh, it's a pleasure to have been your guest. 